At Addis Ababa Ball International Airport, a Boeing 737 MAX is preparing for departure. Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 is a scheduled international flight headed for Nairobi, Kenya. 8.37 am. The flight is given clearance to depart. On board are Captain Yared Getichev, First Officer Ahmedur Mohamed, six crew members and 149 passengers. 8.38 am. The flight takes off without any issues. Inside the cockpit, the pilots are going through their usual pre flight checklist when they suddenly notice a problem with the autopilot system. The plane is now shaking and losing altitude. The pilots try to manually adjust it, but the aircraft doesn't seem to react and looks to be pushing its nose downwards. 8.44 am. The crew makes an emergency call to air traffic control, requesting permission to return to the airport. The crew are still trying to figure out what is happening. Their confusion starts to turn into panic. 8.47 am. The plane is seen on radar turning around. The pilots desperately try one last time to regain control of the aircraft. But the situation is too dire. The plane is now in a steep dive. Everyone on board is starting to lose hope. 8.48 am. The plane crashes near Bistofu, Ethiopia, killing all 157 people on board. There is nothing they could have done. And you know what's even more shocking? Just a few months prior, an other 737 MAX crashed in eerily similar circumstances. That tragedy, Lion Air Flight 610, which crashed on October 29th, 2018, claimed the lives of an other 189 victims. These were no ordinary accidents. In truth, this type of plane was a ticking time bomb. You see, it had a new system in place, a faulty, rush system deliberately hidden from the pilots, and hidden for a simple reason, to increase the company's profits. And what's even worse is that Boeing knew. They knew exactly how risky it was to keep these planes up in the air, especially after the first crash. But I'm afraid they didn't do the right thing, not until it was too late. This is a story of lies, cover-ups and shifting blame. This is how Boeing destroyed their reputation forever. So how did a company so well respected and loved by the community stoop so low? To understand, we have to go back to the beginning. The Boeing company was founded in 1916 by William E. Boeing, a passionate aviation pioneer. While working as a timber merchant, William was inspired by the growing interest in airplanes and the endless possibilities they could bring. With a background in engineering and a desire to make a difference, William set out to build a better airplane. He built the first plane, the Boeing Model 1, in his own garage. It was designed to be easy to fly and handle well, and it quickly gained the reputation of being reliable and an efficient aircraft. William's first plane was soon followed by a wide range of other designs, from the two-seat Model C to the more advanced four-seat Model 40. With each new design, William and his team pushed the boundaries of what was possible in aviation. They even created the world's first successful commercial jetliner, the Boeing 707, which revolutionized the entire aviation industry. This passion is what made it possible for them to later create such iconic and beloved airplanes such as the Boeing 737 and 747. Things took a turn for the worse though in 1990. That year, Boeing merged with the rival company, McDonnell Douglas. At first, the merger was seen as a positive move for Boeing, as it gave them access to a wider range of products and technologies. It also allowed them to expand their market presence as well as their research and development capabilities. However, that merger had some serious negative long-term consequences for the company. Firstly, it had caused significant job losses, as many employees were laid off as a result of the merger. There have also been issues with plant closures and other cost-cutting measures, which have led to a substantial decrease in overall quality. In addition, as time went on, the company culture also suffered. The company lost its focus. It was no longer run by passionate engineers, but by businessmen putting profits above everything. And this can be very, very dangerous in this industry. With a market cap of over a hundred billion dollars, you'd think that they would invest more and more in safety features. But despite the company's financial success, their quality control has been on the decline since years. For example, there were many reports of Boeing mechanics allegedly leaving tools inside plane wings close to the cables that control their movements. Not exactly promising, along with other incidents of improperly installing wires which could increase the risk of shorts or even fires. Additionally, there is also the issue of the company outside sourcing parts of their production. By relying on outside companies, Boeing is placing trust in the quality and accuracy of their subcontractors, but this trust is often misplaced. Case in point, according to interviews and government documents, during a trip to Japan in 2015, FAA investigators discovered that a Boeing subcontractor had forged cargo door certifications on hundreds of 777s, and did so for years. 
but dodgy quality control wasn't the sole reason for these tragedies. There was something much bigger at play here. To get the full picture, let's briefly talk about Airbus. The Airbus vs Boeing rivalry has been going on for decades, but perhaps what accelerated things most in recent years was the introduction of the Airbus A320neo in 2014. Compared to the previous A320 model, the Neo had improved aerodynamics and larger winglets. Additionally, it was powered by new, more fuel-efficient engines that reduce fuel and burn emissions. This made it cheaper to operate and more attractive to airlines. Airbus was quickly catching up to Boeing in sales as a result, and for good reason. The Boeing 737 engine G, their latest model at the time, was a relatively fuel-inefficient aircraft compared to others in its class. It also had limited range and payload capacity. Additionally, it wasn't as technologically advanced as some of its competitors, such as the Airbus A320neo. Boeing had to respond. They were under immense pressure to develop a new, more modern version of the 737 in order to compete with the rival company. But there were some serious challenges that they faced along the way, most notably when it comes to the plane's engines. See, Boeing didn't want to redesign the entire plane. It would have been very costly and time-consuming to develop an entirely new aircraft. They wanted to put more modern, fuel-efficient engines in the body of the existing 737 models, with the least changes possible in order to save both time and money. So they did just that. The new 737 MAX models featured larger, more fuel-efficient engines compared to their predecessors. Boeing also had to develop a new system to compensate for the increased power from the engine and prevent the plane from entering an aerodynamic stall. This new system was called the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS for short. And while it was perfectly fine in theory, it lacked in one key area – redundancy. The lack of redundancy in the MCAS system caused engineering teams concerns from day one. See, the system only had one sensor to get information from. That means if the sensor was wrong, the system would use the wrong information and do the wrong thing. It would have been better if there was another sensor to check if the first sensor was wrong. If the two sensors had different answers, the system would know something was wrong and not use the wrong data. But no, Boeing only put one sensor in their plane. This is what ultimately led to the crashes of Flight 302 and Flight 610. But believe it or not, in and of itself even the MCAS system wouldn't have been that much of an issue, as the pilots, in theory, could just disable it and take matters into their own hands. But here is where the story takes an even darker turn. In order to get the new plane out on the market as quickly as possible, not only did Boeing cut corners and overlook safety protocols, they also didn't properly brief their pilots. Pilots of the 737 MAX aircraft only received an iPad course to fly the plane. The course consisted of a short one-hour overview and did not provide any detailed instruction on the MCAS system. This resulted in most pilots being completely unaware of the system existence in the first place. To be fair, Boeing liked likely assumed that MCAS would be an unobtrusive part of the aircraft and wouldn't play any significant part of the plane's performance or handling, but this does not absolve them of any and all responsibility. Still, the Federal Aviation Administration did certify the aircraft in 2017, so what's going on with that? Well, as it turns out, in a shocking turn of events, it was revealed that the FAA had given Boeing significant control over the certification process for the 737 MAX, allowing the company to self-certify certain aspects of the aircraft. This lack of oversight proved to be a grave mistake. The FAA's trust in Boeing was misplaced, and the lives of hundreds would be tragically cut short as a result. To make the situation even worse, after the first crash in 2018, Boeing tried to blame the pilot instead of taking responsibility. This allowed the planes to keep flying and put more people in danger. This decision ultimately cost the lives of hundreds of people and the company its reputation. After the second crash, the seriousness of the situation became more apparent. People were shocked and wanted answers. Fingers were pointed and accusations were made. It was clear that the consequences of the disasters would be significant. The future of Boeing was uncertain and the lives of those affected by the crashes would be changed forever. News were circulating that Boeing allegedly knew about the issues up to a year before the fatal accidents took place. Mark Faulkner, the senior Boeing pilot and executive in charge of the 737 MAX program, was charged with criminal offenses as a result. It was alleged that he defrauded the FAA by hiding the critical safety system responsible for the crashes. But despite these charges, he was ultimately found not guilty. It remains unclear what really happened and who is it to blame for all of this. However, one thing is for certain. 
Captain. Both of these tragedies could have been easily avoided if Boeing had prioritized safety over rushing their planes to market for profit. Despite nearly two years of groundings, lawsuits and costly settlements, Boeing continues to struggle in the aftermath of the devastating 737 MAX crisis, and there is no guarantee that the company will ever fully recover.